Hi everyone, and welcome to Illinois Corn TV this week, where we will learn about important legislation regarding the RFS. Who won the Illinois Corn T-shirt contest? And what does weather look like this summer? We are already at 84% of corn planted and 45% of corn has emerged. Well, legislation introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives would remove an outdated provision from the Renewable Fuel Standard that prevents cornstarch ethanol from being categorized as an advanced biofuel. The legislation recognizes the progress made in cutting the carbon intensity of ethanol since the RFS was enacted. Here is the NCGA President, Tom Haig. We applaud Representative Miller Meeks and the original co-sponsors for introducing legislation that recognizes the declining carbon intensity of today's low carbon ethanol and helps level the playing field. Farmers are proud to contribute to lowering ethanol carbon footprint through our production practices. And this bill will ensure EPA uses the most recent science and data to accurately measure the greenhouse gas reduction benefits of biofuels. That audio is courtesy of Todd Gleason at the University of Illinois. Begun in 2005 and expanded in 2007, the RFS requires transportation fuel sold in the U.S. to contain a minimum volume of renewable fuels. Under the law, advanced biofuels must deliver a 50% or more reduction in greenhouse gas emissions compared to gasoline. That's a requirement for today's ethanol, and we are capable of meeting that. Well, if you missed it, Illinois Corn put on a t-shirt contest in April, boosting creativity while showing the love of farming throughout the state. The first place winner was Jordan Bidner. Jordan grew up in Fisher, Illinois, which is in the central part of the state. His passion for art and drawing led him to Parkland College, where he studied graphic design and was able to enter into many art shows. He currently works with digital printing and continues his love for the arts in the community and through his freelancing Biddy's Designs. While Jordan doesn't currently farm, his grandfather farmed his whole life and his grandma lived on the family farm until she was 100. One staple on their farm was their red barn that dated back to 1869. When we asked him how he came up with the idea for the winning t-shirt, he said when he was younger, he used to collect Superman memorabilia. The idea just came to him to connect these two things because farmers are superheroes and the backbone that our country depends on. Second place was awarded to Ava Franzen. Let's meet Ava. Hi, my name is Ava Franzen and I currently live in rural Farmer City, Illinois. I am 13 years old. I currently go to Blue Ridge Intermediate Junior High as an eighth grader. Me and my brother, my sister-in-law, my mom, my dad, my grandma, and my grandpa all farm. And occasionally other family members will come in and help if needed. I love making my dad laugh because it helps him break away from stressful situations and helps me break away from them. Finally, let's find out what summer looks like with state climatologist Trent Ford. The next week, kind of think about the well, next week all the way until until we get into the kind of middle part of summer. The next week looks to be a bit drier and uh, again on the milder side um, of, of as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, but then when we get out to the two week outlook, which really takes us through the month, uh, through the end of the month of May, uh, we begin to see some of that warm air that's been trapped in the western U.S. for a little while now begin to break out. And so our, our chances actually increase for above normal temperatures to end the month of May and still seeing a little bit of signal of drier weather. It doesn't mean that it's going to be bone dry, but it, it, it what this is showing this time of the year is that we're not going to see that really act of storm track bringing us system after system after system. So more likely it'll be kind of the hit or miss as far as rain is concerned. Getting beyond that, of course, we get a bit more uh, uncertain when it comes to uh, the, the outlooks. Um, you know, but but the the most recent three month outlook that kind of includes June and July still paints us a little bit warmer and a little bit wetter than normal. Thanks, Trent. Have a fantastic week and we will see you on the next episode.